Hello everyone, welcome to the Innovation Lab. A few weeks ago, we made a video to show you guys the experiment that we performed to know if it would be possible to use a constant current DC to DC boost converter like this guy here to efficiently perform the function of a uh, solar charge controller. And that means that um, if we can do that, we can use this $28 constant current boost converter or maybe a bulk converter to replace the the functions of this more expensive MPPT solar charge controller. But due to the fact that at the time we were performing that test, it was raining a lot and um, to be honest, I didn't have good solar panels as well to be able to perform that test. So we were using my DIY constant current wall power supply here to emulate the current limited function or behavior of a solar panel. At the end of the video, I promised you guys that I will be making the follow-on video to kind of uh, redo this experiment with an actual solar panel and hopefully at the time we get good sunlight. So I am happy, you know, we have been getting good sunlight uh, in my location and also I was able to find some used, very affordable, very cheap 200 watt solar panels. So what I've done was to kind of uh, get the solar panels, clean them up, wash them up and set them up really nicely in my backyard. So that way we could just bring the power into my lab and use it as a source going into, as you can see here, our MPPT charge controller, positive and negative, and then we use it to charge our batteries. All right. Right now we have two solar panels set up in the backyard, but for this test, we are only going to use one solar panel. So these solar panels are rated for 224 watts each and an open circuit voltage of 36.6 volts and a rated uh, operational current of 7.66 amps. So this should be able to give us enough power coming from the solar panel to perform our test. But the first thing we need to do to play it safe, whenever you're doing anything with electricity, you have to be safe with everything. I have the two power cables coming in from the solar panels, as you can see here. Red is the positive, black is the negative. But before we go into the MPPT charge controller, we have to verify the voltage coming out of the solar panel and also the polarity that we're getting to make sure they correspond with our wire uh, colors here. So right now, as you can see on the uh, Fluke uh, digital multimeter, we are measuring 34.31 volts coming from the solar panel and that tells us that our connections are correct. All right, so now let's go ahead and make the connections to the uh, MPPT charge controller, and then we'll begin to do our test. So the first test that we're going to do will be to use the power coming in from the solar panel, as you can see here, to drive the MPPT solar charge controller. And we're going to use the MPPT solar charge controller to attempt to charge our 24 volt lithium phosphate battery pack. And as we do that, we will keep an eye on the user interface here to see what is going on. So this should show us the PV voltage, uh, PV current, battery voltage, and the charging current that the MPPT charge controller is delivering to our battery. And using those numbers, we'll kind of go back and make the calculations to know how much power we're putting into the battery and also what is the efficiency of the MPPT charge controller. For the second phase of the testing, I guess we can call this test number two. So we are going to use the constant current DC to DC boost converter to try to do the same function that we have just done with the MPPT charge controller, which will be to attempt to charge our battery system. But because the constant current DC to DC boost converter that we are using here is nothing but a cheap device that we are using to do some uh, battery charging, it doesn't have a graphical user interface just like the MPPT charge controller does. 
So what we are going to do is to use this digital battery capacity tester that I made and I just made a video for this device. So if you would like to see the testing that I performed on this device or how I made it, uh, be sure to go check out that video and I'll add a link to the video in the description. And what we are going to do with this guy will be to measure the same parameters that we looked at on the uh, user interface of the MPPT charge controller, which will be the PV voltage, the PV current, the battery voltage, and the charging current. But in this case, it will be the charging current going from the DC to DC boost converter into our battery. All right, my friends, let's get to it. So at this point, we have connected the solar panel to the MPPT charge controller as you can see here. So this is the positive and negative uh, coming in from the solar panel that I have in the backyard. And we're using it to charge this uh, 24 volt uh, lithium phosphate battery pack. So the next thing that we're going to do will be to take a closer look at the uh, user interface here to see what's going in, what uh, values that we're getting coming from the solar panel and going into the battery. All right. All right. So now let's look at what's happening here at the uh, user interface. So as you can see here, the first thing we we'll see will be the uh, PV voltage. So we're getting a PV voltage of 29 volts coming from the solar panel. And we have a PV current of 5.8 amps coming from the solar panel. And, and now we have a battery voltage of 27.5 volts. Uh, it's kind of going between 27.5 and 27.4 and we're seeing a charging current of 6.2 amps going into the battery all right so what we're going to do is that we're going to take these numbers in the end to kind of make the calculations to know how much power that the mppt charge controller is putting into the battery and, and we compare it with how much power it is coming in from the solar panel and that will kind of tell us the efficiency of the MPPT charge controller. All right, my friends, our goal here was not to charge the batteries uh, fully using this charge controller. I can do that later. So my goal here was to kind of do a quick charge to, to get all these parameters uh, so that we can use it to compare it to the, uh, the, the performance of the uh, DC to DC boost converter later. All right, so for the second phase of the testing, we are going to attempt to use our constant current DC to DC boost converter to charge our battery system through the solar panels. And as we do that, we're going to be monitoring the behavior of this a boost converter by looking at the output here of this digital battery capacity tester. One thing I would like to mention is that um, given that what we have here is a boost converter and the voltage coming in from our solar panels is already at 35 volts and that voltage exceeds what we need to charge just a 24 volt lithium phosphate battery pack. So what we're going to do for this experiment, just for the sake of the experiment, will be to add another 24 volt pack. So these three battery packs that you see here, these two are in series, and in series with the 24 volts, will give us about a 48 volt battery pack. And now, using that, we'll double the charging voltage, which brings us to about 60 volts that we're gonna to use to attempt to charge these 48 volt lithium phosphate battery pack all right so let's get to it all right so as you can see here right now our battery system is connected and the entire system is a 48 volt system as i mentioned so and our charging current was dialed way down to allow us you know slowly bring it up and watch the behavior or the interaction of the constant current dc to dc boost converter being between our solar panel and our battery system so right now we're going to slowly raise the charging current and we watch kind of see what is going to happen.
right, my friends, and I try to do this adjustments like three times. So what I'm seeing here is that um, to optimize the power coming in from the solar panel, the constant current DC to DC boost converter was not able to exceed 2.4 amps. So whenever you exceed 2.4 amps, the boost converter begins to understand that you're demanding more power that the solar panel currently has. And what I'm seeing is that when that happens, the charging current drops all the way down to about 0.8 amps. And to readjust it, you have to go all the way down to zero and slowly come back up again. And if you exceed it, you have to do it again over and over and over. So what that tells me is that this is not the best option unless you have all day to sit by your solar panel and just do this manually all day. And this is the function that is baked into the design of the MPPT solar charge controller so that it does that automatically. So whenever the energy from the sun fluctuates, this, uh, the MPPT charge controller will kind of recalculate to know, okay, this is where I can put the charging current without making more demands than what the solar panel uh, can provide. All right, my friends, I am glad you made it to the end of this video. In this video, we wanted to compare the functions of a solar MPPT charge controller with a constant current DC to DC boost converter. And our primary objective would be to see if we can use this cheap device to kind of replicate the function of a more expensive MPPT charge controller. During this test, we have seen that the solar MPPT charge controller has proven to be a lot more efficient than the uh, constant current DC to DC boost converter. So using the MPPT charge controller, we were receiving about 168 um, watts coming in from the solar panel. So what we saw was that the MPPT charge controller was able to optimize the power coming in from the solar panel minus some efficiency losses and still was able to deliver about 161.6 watts to our battery system. So this means from our calculation, this shows that this MPPT charge controller, at the time we were doing this test and using this battery pack, were giving us about a 96% efficiency. However, during the second phase of the testing, when we are now using the constant current DC to DC boost converter to charge our battery system, we were only getting to a charging current of 2.42 amps and a delivered power to our battery system of 131 watts. So what we're seeing when we're making the current adjustments was that if you attempt to exceed the available power coming in from the solar panel, the DC to DC boost converter kind of gets confused and then the output current uh, regulation will crash and you have to go back all the way down to zero and you have to do it again and do it again. And this will also happen when you have like a cloud going over your panel and the energy from the sun uh, reduces, then you have to go back again and readjust and readjust to optimize what you're getting from your solar panel. All right, my friends, my summary for this will be that the constant current DC to DC boost converter, as uh, wonderful as it is and as cheap as it is, will not be able to replace the MPPT solar charge controller for this uh, function. So I would say that um, the this will not be, I would not recommend this for anybody to be using it for solar charging because there will be lots and lots of energy wasted and there will be lots and lots of time wasted for you trying to adjust and adjust and adjust every single time. It's not worth it. All right, my friends, we have come to the end of this video and I hope you had some fun watching this video. I hope you got some good information coming out of this video and if you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and you can also help our channel grow by sharing our videos so that um, the information we're sharing can also help other people around the world. All right, my friends. And as I always say, I know it doesn't make sense, but I will see you guys in the next video.